Good morning, everyone. I'm Reverend Paula Montgomery Skiles, and this is my beautiful musician, India Taylor. Welcome as we conclude our messages based on the book, Lessons of the Turtle, Living Right Side Up by Steve Goodyear this morning. So my past messages, we've learned that our turtle friend has been lying on his back all this time. And he has been learning many lessons, and he's had quite a few aha moments. Many of us, when we're flat on our back, we have a few aha moments, don't we? Well, Turtle is no exception. But through all of his learning, the one thing Turtle is clear about is he wants to be back on his feet. Okay? So today, he gets the lesson of energy through the gift of friends. And as he lies there on his back, Turtle suddenly hears a familiar voice. And he looks to the side and he sees two of his friends arrive at the stream. They had taken the normal route, the regular route that wasn't the one that Turtle chose. So the smaller turtle asks our friend Turtle, he says, do you know how silly you look lying there? Our friend Turtle replies, <clears throat> that he has been told that before. <laughs> He's very willing and ready to get right side up if they would only help. And so Turtle's two friends begin to use their noses to try and push him up. And they push and push, but to no avail. So all three of them conclude, you know what? We need you to help too. So Turtle begins to dig in with his feet and his claws and sure wonder of wonders all of a sudden he's on his feet and he's right side up and you can just see the relief and the ecstatic emotions going over turtle's face right and how asks turtle how do you feel and turtle says our turtle friend he says i feel excited relieved invigorated alive. I'm ready to start a whole new life. <laughs> Turtle is so happy because he didn't think he would ever see brown earth again. So Turtle, feeling very energized, is receiving the lesson of energy from the gift of his friends. And that energy is zeal. It's enthusiasm. Now, the word enthusiasm comes out of the root entheos, which really literally means filled with God. And so, Turtle is literally enthusiastic. He's filled with that sense of God life, right? The sense of new life comes when you and I have an opportunity to, to share and to be with friends. It always invigorates. It, it, it always leaves us with something. And so the energy we feel from our own friendships is essentially being filled with God life. This is my message today, and it's about the possibility of new life filled with God. Now, perhaps like me and our friend Turtle for a period of time, you found yourself looking up from down every which way. lost, hopeless despair, flat on your back, whatever it is. We've all had an opportunity, most of us, to experience letting go of our dreams or our hopes or whatever it is that, that gives us a sense of hope and purpose, right? So this morning, I want to remind us of those dreams. I want to remind us of the value and the importance of friendship. I want to speak to the lessons and what they, what Living Right Set Up really is about. And so I ask you, is there something that gives you a sense of hope or purpose? What is it that you maybe once dreamed of to create a better life for yourself or others? And that's part of dreams, is they always enrich and better not only yourself, but others as well. Have you accomplished it? Is it time for a new dream? If you didn't accomplish it, why not? How many of your hopes and dreams have gone to the dream graveyard? 
Most dreams of life require a great deal of effort. We know this. We know we have to work. But many times we don't realize we also have to have help in accomplishing them. Sometimes we're so caught up in thinking we're supposed to do it all on our own. And we can't ask for help or we can't reach out. Many things happen to us in life as we try to take the circumstances that we have and mold them into something different. And sometimes that requires help, most of the time. And I think that recognizing that is important. Elizabeth Foley wrote, friends are like pillars on a porch. Sometimes they hold you up. Sometimes they lean on you. Sometimes it's just enough they are standing by. And you and I need to know sometimes, don't we? I think we all face times when we need that just that little bit of encouragement or something that uplifts us or that unexpected phone call from a friend and, and or maybe just a walk in the woods or a really passionate talk from someone who believes in us, right? I think we all need those. And so I ask you this morning, who is it that you turn to? Who warms your heart? Who, who inspires you? Those are the people that when we're down, we really need to talk to. We really need to reach out to. That's when we can feel the presence of God. Because when we're with our friends or family or loved ones, and they're expressing that love and unconditional acceptance, right? That's when we can feel not only supported, but we can feel it, something is, is possible for us that we let go of or that we have stopped believing we can do. And of course, we can't, like Turtle, just depend on our friends. We have to dig in ourselves. We have to get our feet and our, and our whole body, so to speak, into everything in order to get ourselves right set up once we're upside down. Jesus knew the value of friendship. And so post-resurrection, can you imagine this scene? Any of you ever had a campfire? where in the morning, just like maybe before dawn, and it's breakfast, and you've got this campfire going, and it's, it's been a damp night, maybe, and you can't, anybody ever have a little ache or chill, you know, coming in and getting around that, and you stand, and you can smell the tangy smell of that smoke as that fire just gently just wafts over, right? Of course, there's Jesus, He's standing there on the shore, all right? And all of his disciples are out in a boat, most of them anyway, fishing. And they see this light on the shore, and it beckons them out of the dark towards the shoreline, right? And it gives them a place to focus on, because they know if there's a fire, it's going to be on shore. And so they focus on it, and they come towards shore. And as soon as Peter sees Jesus, he jumps out of the boat. He wraps himself in a fisherman's cloak and goes and meets Jesus first. He doesn't even wait for the others to get there. Now, join me in this. Can you feel the excitement? Can you feel the electricity of friends getting back together? And, and imagine, just imagine, this is... This is an experience where it's like, oh, here's my friend that you don't know if you're ever going to have a chance to spend much more time with or whatever it is that goes on. Sometimes we have opportunities and they just, they slip by us, don't they? Think about this, though. When you and I have these experiences where we see that light. We see that there's a part of us that just wants to jump towards it. But many times we resist, don't we? Now here's that fire. And it's and you can eat, and, and I don't know about you, many people don't care for the taste or smell of fish, you know, over an open flame. But this fish and bread is cooking and they're hungry. And I can tell you, it's wonderful. I bet there's lots of butter on it. 
I'll bet there's lots of butter. And, and because there's a lot of salt in that area, there's salt and some kind of spice. And can you just smell it? And that bread cooking with it? Oh, my gosh. Anyway, I have had already had breakfast, and you wouldn't know it. But there's this sustenance that you can just put your teeth into. And Jesus says, come and eat. Come and eat. And they're a little bit nervous, but there's this excitement of wondering, who is this? What's happening? And as they come to shore, Jesus says, come and eat and bring some of your fish too. Take note of that. Because as you and I look at these stories, it's important to go beyond the literal story. It's important to understand that there's a message here. And that message is about what Peter is. He's that part of us that is our faith. And it just literally rushes in to be a part and to celebrate and to acknowledge the Christ. All right? And that Christ spirit within you and I says, come, eat. Feel that nurturing. Feel that sustenance. Feel the sharing. Feel that part of you. And bring that within you forward. What are the fish? Those are the ideas uh, that come to us, the resources that you and I have for meeting everything in life that we can use. And those fish represent that, the variety of them. And they represent those coming forward and we're bringing that to the table, so to speak. We're bringing those ideas forward. And we're taking them and offering as a part of. And so this whole story is about what it takes for you and I. It's not just a story about Jesus after he's risen, coming back to say, hey guys, how's it going? No. This story is something that's about a way of living life. Always, Jesus was always teaching, always offering his bread, which are the teachings. And the bread is that sustaining part, too. Those teachings that bring us an awareness of spirit. Bring us that sense of connection. And that's the value of our friends. The connections to spirit that you and I can feel. And so, filled with God life. Enthusiasm. These, these guys are now like, yeah, this is Jesus. This is him. This is it. Okay. And so they're enjoying their repast. They're sharing. They're enthusiastic. They're feeling the sustenance. I hope you can feel it as well this morning. So I'm asking you this morning, join with me. Join with that sense of Christ within your own being. And allow yourself to move forward in whatever it is that enlivens you, that gives you a sense of purpose. And... Remember that even though we may resist, and, and, and you know what? Sometimes, even though that fire beckoning helps to relieve our aches and chills, we do resist. I'm just too busy. I can't talk to them. I can't reach out. They wouldn't want to hear from me. Whatever the stories are we tell ourselves, or I just don't have time for this, right? But you know what? Those are the things that make us feel alone when we isolate ourselves, when we withdraw, when we spend that time alone. Sometimes we need to. It's true. But many times we need to lift our heads up and notice that we've been there so long that we've pitched a tent. And so I ask you, whenever you're looking at that, to recognize it's time to move back to experience that which feeds our soul, to experience that which nurtures our own being and others as well. Sometimes by giving to others when we're not feeling it ourselves, that's how we renew ourselves. That's how we experience it. So then we can pull up those stakes as we reach in and dig out of that situation we may be in where we're upside down. I understand you have a wonderful story in music.
Let Go of the Shore by Karen Drucker. Would you share with us, yes. India? Yes, I brought it to relate to the talk because in order to change and transform, we often have to let go of some things, maybe some old ideas. Let go of the shore and let the water carry you. Let go of the shore, float into the mystery. expression. Sometimes we do have to let go of that shore, don't we? You know, yes, that fire, it's there. It's always going to be there. It's going to be burning. But we have to let go of those things that we think we have to have or the way things have to look, don't we? And that shore can represent those fixed ideas of, okay, it's got to look this way or no way, right? My way or the highway? I know that one. I've heard it. Come out of my lips once. <laughs> Think about this, giant California redwood trees tower like 300 feet maybe, some of them. And it would seem that they would require pretty deep roots, right? In order to anchor them against the strong winds. And yet they have very shallow roots in order to capture as much of the rain that comes as possible. But these trees' roots intertwine within each other so that what happens is they end up supporting and holding each other in place. So that's how they not only don't have to stand alone, but it's a support system, even though it's unseen, under the ground, so to speak. It's a support system, so they're never standing alone. Peggy Tabor Millen captures this idea beautifully in a metaphor she writes about. I was on a train on a rainy day, and the train was slowing down to pull into a station. For some reason, I became intent on watching the raindrops on the window. You ever done that? I have. Two separate drops pushed by the wind merged into one for a moment and then divided again, each carrying with it a part of the other. Simply by that momentary touching, neither was what it had been before. And as each one went on to touch other raindrops, it shared not only itself, but what it had gleaned from the other. We never touch someone so lightly that we don't leave a trace. Our state of being matters to those around us. Every encounter leaves an impression. It's so true that 
my moods, your moods, we affect one another. And no matter if we're walking by and we don't even see that person as someone we know, we know whether they're upset, we know if they're angry, or we know if they're looking at us with animosity, or they're just so sad, and we can see it. It affects us. Or if they can see the smile on our face. If it's just a smile, if it's just a smile, we, we matter. You and I matter. Every encounter leaves an impression. So many times, many of us want to feel like we can be like the sun and brighten someone's day, right? But think about this. It's even just as important that we be like the moon and shine in someone's darkest hours. When you and I give unconditional love and acceptance, we, we can sense and feel the energy between ourselves and the other person. There's sustenance and there's sharing. There's enthusiasm and the zeal of life, new life that moves through us when we do that. And so I ask you, what is important? Is that when we're doing anything that we're finding ourselves upside down, you're not feeling right or despair or our dreams seem so far beyond us or that our dreams have even led us into a situation where we've made choices where now we're upside down, physical, physically, financially, however it happens, right? It's then time, truly time, to really eat of that sense of spirit. That's when we most need our friends. That's when we most need to reach out. What is living right side up? Well, I have, an, I have an acronym for all of these messages. I do. Living right side up. Let me share this idea. It's about C, choice. H, honor. A, affirmation. N, now. G, goals, E, energy. The acronym of change. And it really means is when you and I make the choice to honor ourselves as children of God and to create an affirmation of our dreams in order to make them real and to bring them to life now, where they feed our souls and we need it now, and we set a goal to create them and to make them a reality and we help uh, or we have the help of our friends or people who we have yet to even know who are friends we experience the energy we need to grow to evolve to change and to transform our lives and so ultimately living right set up the catalyst is change simple right not easy but simple. So let me remind you then, if you haven't started living from a dream, find your dream. Think back before all your hopes or dreams were crushed by circumstances in life. Connect to it. Find others who have the same dream or similar. You can go online and online groups or a community. Find a community who's also doing that. And let yourself thrive through the enthusiasm that's built up interacting with people who feel that same dream or something like it. As you and I let ourselves be fed through that enthusiasm, that life of God that comes into us, it will invigorate us. And remember, wake up every day with a goal. Make an action plan. And if you don't have one, make a plan to make one. Set a goal. Every night, think about what your goal is before you go to bed for the next day. And then do everything in your power to make that goal come to pass. It's important to remember, as we did learn in one of our lessons, to expect that there will be good days and bad days. Remember that one? Yes. Expect it. 
Things are going to happen. And, and just prepare yourself if that's going to happen. But remember to learn to trust in your dream. Trust that the very desires of your heart were placed there for you and that spirit is helping you even when it doesn't seem like it. There is a powerful way to re-energize, and I invite you to try this yourself. Celebrate your accomplishments. Think about this. Even God celebrated the accomplishment of creation. Don't believe me? Think about it. After each day, what does it say? God looked upon all that had been created and declared it good. If that's not celebrating an accomplishment, I don't know what it is. Really, I mean, think about it. So when you and I have a goal that we've accomplished, when you and I have reached some milestone or something of importance in, in our dream and making it come real, do something to reward yourself, to, to make a feel-good jar. Have you ever done that where you have a feel-good jar and you take those accomplishments and use a symbol for it or even write them down, that I accomplished this, and put them in a glass jar so you can see them pile up? Because as you're doing that, you're creating an affirmation of that dream and you can see your successes and it becomes so much more real to you. And I invite you, make an accomplishment jar, a feel-good jar, whatever you want to call it, and celebrate your accomplishments. Speaking of dinner out with friends, don't forget, people that who are your friends or maybe even people who need to be a part of your dream and you have yet to come to know them as friends, they are vital. They are vital. There's a reason Jesus went back to these disciples after his resurrection. And it wasn't about saying, hey, you got work to do here. You are not doing it out here fishing. That's not what it was about. It was about recognizing and being a part of that and allowing that energy of the Christ to reinvigorate them in the dream of heaven on earth and to remind them of what it is. When you and I are able to recognize we each have unique gifts, passions, and ideas, and we're meant to bring them forward, and we do it, there's something so powerful in that, and it makes our lives change for the better, and the lives of those that we love and care about change for the better. When we look through the eyes of spirit at those around us and through a sense of remembering sustenance, sharing, and experiencing the enthusiasm of that. We're seeing with eyes of truth. We're seeing them with eyes of wonder, or our dream with eyes of hope. And so today, I invite you to become like our friend Turtle, excited, relieved, alive, invigorated, ready for a whole new life. There's sustenance, there's sharing, there's enthusiasm, there's zeal. That is the energy for new life. God bless you. India, would you share with us some ideas from Daniel Namod in his song, Water? Yes, so I was thinking that we can be like water too and let ourselves flow beautifully through a transformed life. And I love that change acronym. This is water. I've seen my share of struggle when I thought that I knew best. When I've sailed through a storm instead of stopping to rest. And it always seems the hardest when I've made up my stubborn mind. Well, I'm changing my ways this time. I want to be like water coming down a mountain into shadowy canyons flowing from pool to stream want to be like water head uphill no more I am bound for the sea have you ever seen an eagle head straight into the wind 
doesn't pick a fight, spreads his wings and just gives in. And in the end, he always makes it home just fine. I guess he knows that every storm subsides. I want to be like water coming down a mountain into shadowy canyons. Flowing from pool to stream 